Good morning, and welcome to worship at Coral Gables Congregational Church. We are a part of the United Church of Christ, and every time we gather, we love to say that no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of life and faith, you are welcome here. And we are so glad to have a packed house today for such a special Sunday. Friends, if this is the first time you're joining us, we'd love to greet you in the fellowship hall after worship through those doors. We love visitors and guests. We love getting to know you and your story and welcoming you into our community. So please join us in there. For those of you joining us online from here in Miami and around the world. Welcome, welcome. We love worshiping with you around the world every Sunday. Please sign in so we can know who you are, um, know where you're from, and we can send you a special welcome. And for those of you joining us here in this sanctuary, there should be a red pad in your pew. Please sign that. Let us know of your presence. If this is your first time here, please leave some contact information. We'd love to send you an email or a letter welcoming you into this community. Friends, your bulletin is filled with announcements about the life of the church toward the back. We'd love for you to join us for any or all of those events and ministries throughout the week. And please don't forget, um, if you have not yet signed up for PushPay and received your free Gables UCC flashlight, you can do that following the service in the fellowship hall. I know it's all about the flashlight, isn't it? Yes. Well, friends, this is such a special day in the history of this congregation and in the life of the United Church of Christ, where we get to celebrate the ministry of Lori Hafner, 40 years of her anniversary of her ordination. You know, I looked at the picture on the top of the bulletin and I said, I can hear Lori laughing in this picture. Um, it's going to be such a special Sunday. We have um, one of Lori's best friends and colleagues, Ben Guess, is our guest preacher today. Ben, thank you for being with us. You can learn more about Ben on page 19 of your bulletin. Ben has a wonderful story and does wonderful ministry with the United Church of Christ and the ACLU. Um, beautiful music, as some of it we've already heard. We have a special baptism for Juliet, one of our children in the congregation. And of course, the chocolate reception to follow in Fellowship Hall. Even if you didn't bring anything, please join us. All are welcome. We know how much Lori loves some good chocolate. And so we get to celebrate together Lori's ministry and the life of this church. So friends, on this celebratory day, with this family gathered, let us all settle in, take a deep breath, and join our hearts for worship. And love is love is love is love is love is love is love.
join me in the call to worship. We each have many gifts to offer in service of God. Some will be teachers, others preachers. Some will be capable leaders, others will be skillful workers. Some will be those who have visions of all possibilities. Others will find ways to make those visions a reality. Some will develop ministries of peace and justice. Others will seek to change. Each person here has been blessed by God. God, help us to use those blessings to help others. Amen. Friends, would you pray with me? Holy One, you have called us to justice. You have called us to love. You have called us to walk with you and one another on this journey of life. Bless this time of worship and celebration with your presence of joy and peace. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray.
When we say peace be with you, we are also saying justice be with you, mercy be with you, compassion be with you, love be with you, and God be with you. And so, my friends, peace be with you and so much more, and also with you. Family and friends, we gather now to celebrate the gift of grace through the sacrament of baptism. As we do, we remember these words from Scripture. They were bringing children to Jesus that Jesus might bless them, but the disciples rebuked them. And when Jesus saw it, Jesus became indignant and said to them, Let the children come unto me and hinder them not, for to such belongs the realm of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the realm of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. 
The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God, inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's love, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. And so I ask both of you as parents of this beautiful child, is it your desire to have her baptized into this Christian community? If so, answer, it is. Will you encourage your child to learn from the wisdom of the prophets, doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with her God? If so, answer, we will. Will you foster for your child an appreciation for the life and teachings of Jesus in concert with an appreciation for diverse religious traditions? If so, answer, we will. And will you teach your child to honor the faith questions that will belong to her throughout her life? If so, say, we will. We will. And I ask you as godparents, Will you journey with this child and her parents to discover the wonder of God's love made so manifest here this day? If so, please answer, I will. And do you promise to care for this child by your actions and style of life, teaching her the joys of God's world and loving her and forever being inseparably bound with her? If so, answer, I do. Will the congregation please stand in body and spirit? Jesus calls us to welcome children into the full life of our community, opening our table and hearts to those most vulnerable and offering the wisdom of the ages to all who hunger for truth. Do you, who witness and celebrate this sacrament, Promise your love, support, and care to this child and to her parents as they together live and grow in Christian community. If so, please answer. We promise our love, support, and care. We promise our love, support, and care. Let us pray. God of wonder and grace, we thank you for your love revealed here in this moment as these parents, this congregation, and you come together making covenant promises. We pray that we will have the grace to uphold the promises made here this day, providing a safe shelter of your love in which this child may grow into the fullness of her life. We pray that these parents may continue to feel the sweet wonder of your presence so transparent here, and that this child will bask in your love as she makes her own journey through this life. And so we would ask now that you bless by your Holy Spirit this water, bless all who touch and taste this water, that they may be ever reminded of your abiding presence and claim on their lives. Amen. You may be seated. All right, Juliet. Come here. Hi, honey. What name should I give this child? Juliet? Juliet. Juliet. I baptize you in the name of God the Father, of God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit, the mother and father of us all. May God's blessing be upon you, child of God, disciple of Christ, baptized member of the church. Amen. Church family, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our newest baptized member, seven-month-old Juliet. <laughs>
Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes, now she shifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Then Jesus filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, 
and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Friends, listen. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Grace and love and peace be with you all. It is a huge honor to be a guest preacher in this beautiful historic sanctuary at this esteemed pulpit and this wildly inclusive, impactful, and intentional Christian community. Your reputation is known far and wide, and that is why I'm so delighted and excited and humbled and fearful about being the one pastoral colleague that Lori would invite for this occasion. But it is a great privilege to have uh, this morning uh, to be able to speak on the occasion of Lori's 40th ordination anniversary celebration. For starters, I want to thank Pastor Lori and her family for welcoming me so bodaciously last night at a rowdy and raucous and very fun family get together. They are a hoot, as you would expect Lori Hafner's family to be, and your welcome could not have been more inviting and sincere, and so I thank you. 
And now to our text and our task for today. Will you pray with me? Come, Lord Jesus, and be our guest. And may these words and our worship be blessed. Amen. You know, sometimes I think people approach church membership like an insurance policy. Because you never know what might happen. And it's been my experience that we all need a pastor at some point from time to time. Even people who seem to reject church altogether are at a loss when someone dies, or they're looking to get married, or there's a new baby to welcome into the family. The woman who cuts my hair comes to mind. I had been going to her for probably a few months, raised a Roman Catholic, She curses a lot, but she's a creative curser. She drops F-bombs only sparingly, but quite effectively. And she often tells hilarious stories about the experiences she endured growing up in the church. I would laugh, which would only prompt her to want to share more and more of these wild stories about her Catholic upbringing and schooling. And then, after a few haircuts, the subject came up eventually, and what do you do for a living? (laughs) And I said, I'm a minister. (laughs) Yes, a Christian minister. And she was mightily embarrassed after that as she replayed all of the dismissive things that she had managed to talk to me about her disgust for religion and all things church. But I have managed to calm her down as much as I agreed with her about much of her critique of the church. Heretics are some of my favorite people, and she is a really, really good one. (laughs) We've been very good friends now for a decade or more, And when she and her boyfriend decided to get married and they were looking for someone to officiate the wedding, guess who they called? (laughs) You got it. We all need a pastor. That same friend recently reached out with the devastating news that her young adult daughter had been diagnosed with stage four cancer. My husband Jim and I have tried to be as supportive as we can possibly be. Not necessarily a prayer person herself, she did reach out to some of us who are, asking us to muster any good healing energy that we could. Of course, we said. We're already on it, we said. As it would turn out, a priest, a Roman Catholic priest in Central America, evidently the friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, sent assurance to her that he had offered a novena a nine-day series of lighting candles and offering prayers of petition on behalf of her daughter. My friend said several times to me after that, she felt the power in that. We all need a pastor. I have done hundreds of weddings over the course of my nearly 30 years in ministry, but when my now husband and I were planning a commitment service, a holy union for ourselves way back in 2003, Our pastor at the time was Lori Hafner. She was so attentive. We still talk about the care that she offered us in our premarital counseling sessions. She puts my pastoral skills to shame. If you know anything about the Myers-Briggs personality inventory, (laughs) Jim and I are both NFPs, which means we're not that much into details. We may not make lists, but we may not ever get around to checking things off the list. But when you're planning a wedding, you need some detailed people, or as Myers-Briggs would dub them, STJs around. Our shared NFP personality markers explain why Jim and I were out at a Kmart searching and shopping for tiki torches for our reception about four hours before the start of our service. <laughs> Luckily, our pastor was a strong STJ. So when we had completely forgotten to purchase a guest registry book for the 200 or so guests attending, she reminded us that that is kind of important and something that we might value down the road. So she ran out on the Friday night after our rehearsal at the last minute, and she purchased us one. And she wrote lovingly, attentively, 
words of blessing on the inside cover. We need a pastor. When Jim and I got legally married in Provincetown, Massachusetts, we wanted no big affair. We had already done that five years earlier with a guest registry book and tiki torches to prove it. And we wanted just the two of us and a minister on the beach. The town's clerk offered us a list of willing clergy who would officiate for total strangers. And we reviewed the list, and being from Cleveland, we picked out the Reverend David Cleveland for obvious reasons. And the best part is his price was only $75. We all need pastors, even, even the cheap ones. I think we tipped him an extra 25 About three years ago, I was going through a lot of vocational anxiety and discernment. I had served 12 years in parish ministry and then worked for 17 years at the UCC's national offices, the last six as one of the denominations elected executive ministers. I was traveling nationally and visiting churches about 70% of the time, away from my husband and our pets way too much. And when I was at home and actually in the office, it felt like I spent most of my work days laying people off due to the denomination's ever-shrinking budgets and financial resources. Many of the people that I was having to riff were close, long-time friends and colleagues, and it was taking a huge toll on me. And when it was time for me to decide whether or not I'd pursue election to another four-year term, I knew I had a big choice to make. I was, at the time, 49 years old, nowhere near retirement, but I knew that I was not happy. And I had this urgent sense of needing my pastor. So I emailed Kelly, my pastor now, and I asked if she would meet with me, providing some context for why I wanted to get together. And we met at this little bougie coffee shop, and she came loaded with some books and materials on career discernment, Having worked at the UCC's national offices herself, she said she could relate to my uncertainties and anxieties and frustrations. We laughed, we reflected, we lamented, we plotted, and we brainstormed. And mostly, she just listened. And at one point, she said, I would like to pray with you, Ben, if that is okay. And she took my hand, and there, in public, she whispered holy words loving words, tender words, affirming words about my worth as a person, as a leader, as a minister, as a colleague, as a friend. She talked intimately to God in public about me, and I had the opportunity to eavesdrop on that conversation. And she reminded me that I was not alone with my questions. Yes, we need a pastor. I left that Lakewood coffee shop feeling three inches taller and 10 pounds lighter. I wasn't experiencing any sort of life-threatening trauma or illness as many of us do, but I was burdened. We all have our burdens. Am I enough? Am I worthy? Am I up to the task? Am I wasting my time in this life? Am I making a difference? Am I a good parent? Am I a good husband, wife, son, or daughter? Does my life have purpose, meaning? How are love and justice calling me to organize my life and redirect my path? So many questions, and we need a pastor at times to help us sort them all out. Now, to be fair, we also need a plumber. <laughs> and we need an accountant, and we need an optometrist, and a therapist, and a lawyer, and a Pilates instructor, if you're so inclined. And we need some friends, because the pastor is not there for your every single need, but for a very special assignment to help discern and discover the work of the Spirit in your life, to provide a measure of familiar trust and recognition and tradition and sameness, sameness in the midst of unpredictable chaos, change, and uncertainty, to challenge your overly set ways and perspectives. We need a pastor to invite you into community and right relationships, and perhaps most importantly, to, to, to preach and to teach the gospel that Jesus came to proclaim, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim relief to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the acceptable year of our God, 
to preach and teach the gospel. Yes, we need a pastor for that. I remember Lori Hafner once preaching a sermon, an environmental sermon, about clean water. And I remember that I was moved to tears by a sermon on clean water. Now that is some powerful preaching, people. And I've heard equally good sermons by Lori and other pastors on a whole lot of subjects, on voting and welcoming strangers and breaking bread, on chronic illness and solar power, on humility, on housing and, and, and grace over retribution and sexual abuse and addiction and recovery and treasuring and loving our pets. And at the conclusion of a whole lot of those sermons that I have listened to, I pause and I think, and I think, how did the pastor just do that? Taking overly simple or overly complex issues and weaving in personal stories and human illustrations and throwing in some science and thousands of years of religious tradition and ancient texts and sending us home changed, at least for a little bit, or sometimes changed by a whole lot by these pulpit monologues. Oh boy, we need a pastor. We need a pastor to remind us that as people of faith, we are not set apart. We are set among the problems of the world, including our own, and we are critical to finding their solutions. We need a pastor to tell us that we're better than we sometimes think we are. And at other times to tell us we're not so high and mighty and highfalutin and important as we sometimes think ourselves to be. And our pastor knows just what we need to hear at that right moment. We need a pastor to provoke us to be the change we want to see in the world, to be good global citizens, to take our democracy seriously, to take our relationships seriously, but also to remind us that we are in this for the long haul. One thousand peace marches, neither the first nor the last eternal work that we have inherited from generations prior and we will tend to here and now for a few years, perhaps a few decades, before we pass it off to generations hence. We need a pastor to remind us of this great cloud of witnesses that we have been so lovingly grafted into. And we need a pastor who will love us, who will love us, but in the fullness and bigness of redemptive love. Love that requires us to put on our big girl britches and get to work for justice, taking on and upending unfair systems, confronting racism that pervades and pollutes our culture and our politics and our religion. When truth that is eternal is sometimes hard to hear and especially hard for us to remember, when it can be obscured or manipulated or it must be made messy by the facts on the ground or the lies on our lips, we need a pastor with courage and wit and determination to correct our course. When conformity is worshiped over inclusivity, when judgment is preferred over justice, when we forget that everyone deserves to be the apple of someone's eye, we need a pastor to remind us all of that and often. You know, friends, there's a reason why we have to keep coming back to church week in and week out, Sunday after Sunday, even though not much of the core curriculum changes. <laughs> it's still about preaching good news to the poor, to let the oppressed go free, proclaiming release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, the acceptable year of our God. But these things are hard to hear, and we need someone who will put it in a package that will enable us to hear. Oh, who will speak a word for us? Send me, says our pastor. I will go. I will speak. I will lead. And that is a very good thing. Because we need a pastor who will invite us into, to take one another's hands and sing songs and recite litanies and tell jokes for the sake of hope. Never underestimate the power of hope and reconciliation. We need a pastor who will ask us to be more generous than we might otherwise be, more caring, more slow to anger and blame. And we need a pastor who will spread the feast and invite us to come to Christ's table. We need a pastor who will tell us that in the words of Robert Frost, when at times the mob is swayed to carry praise or blame too far, that we might choose something like a star to stay our minds on and be stayed. 
We need a pastor who will pronounce the benediction over us, who will heap grace on us and send us forth into the world to do good things, bold, creative, and impactful, believing in the power that we hold. Lori, for 40 years, you have been pronouncing that benediction over us. When we needed a pastor, you have said yes to this huge job, these formidable tasks, taking care of millions of details. You have been our pastor through hard and challenging moments. You've lifted us out of dark and deep places. You have walked with us in sadness and seeming despair. And you have laughed with us. And you have invited us to laugh with you. You've even encouraged us to laugh at you. You have been a fool for Christ and your folly has made it possible for all of us to become more vulnerable in the sight of one another and more vulnerable in the sight of God, less focused on our crazy ideas of being perfect and more attentive to what it means to be pure in heart. At the same time, you have been a pastor who has taught us what it means to dream big, to live big, to go bold or go home one who believes that anything worth doing is worth throwing our fullest selves into the endeavor. Nothing in Lorenda Hapner's ministry is ever done nilly-willy or half-ass. It is full on with every bell and whistle and boa and flaming baton and tiara she can find. Lori, this church needs you, and they deserve you, because they need a pastor, and you're a damn good one. For 40 years, you have proven that. But when I say this church needs a pastor, I am using the capital letter C, because the United Church of Christ, and more than that, the Christian Church Universal, the body at large, needs pastors made in the beautiful image and likeness and mold that is you. So today we are here to say thank you and to let you know how grateful we are that you have said yes to this noble and important vocation, especially at a time when pastors don't hear that all that often. Laurie, we are some of the people who love you the most and we have loved you the longest and we are here to celebrate the wealth of your many accomplishments on this milestone anniversary. But these accomplishments, because you have done them so well, are not just your accomplishments. They have been grafted onto us and have become our accomplishments. Because your good work lives on in us every day in thousands of ways in the lives you touch and inspire through your ministry. We know how important your work is and how seriously you take it and take that responsibility. Hearts depend on it. Our very souls depend on it. How lucky the people of Coral Gables Congregational United Church of Christ, and how blessed we are, the United Church of Christ, to have been the recipients of your 40 years of gifts. Because, you know, we need a pastor. We all need a pastor.
as we enter into a time of prayer, we would ask that you remember today the life of Marcy, a dear friend of our church member, Gail Sosby. We would also ask that you remember all of our students beginning a new year this week, as well as their teachers, custodians, administrators, and also our Sunday school teachers. Friends, there is so much to pray for today and every day. But this day, let us turn to God in deep gratitude. Let us pray. Holy One, as our summer season comes to a close and our lives return to set schedules and routines, we give you thanks for all we have experienced this summer. Mangoes and fireworks, homework-free evenings and slower-paced mornings, vacations and staycations too. For all of this and for all that is to come this week, we give you our deepest gratitude, knowing we continue to abide in your presence as our future unfolds. Holy One, who called the disciples to follow Jesus, we come before you today as a community full of thanksgiving. We have set apart this anniversary day to recognize a milestone in ministry for our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Lorinda Hafner. We are amazed at the strength of Pastor Lori, who at such a young age dared to answer your call at a time when women in ministry was certainly not the norm. We come with our love and our respect for her, bringing with us 40 years of parishioners and church board members, 40 years of church staff and fellow clergy, 40 years of bedsides and gravesides. 40 years of weddings and baptisms, 40 years of extravagant hospitality and humor, 40 years of dancing and joy, and well over 2,000 prophetic sermons. For her family, colleagues, and all those communities of faith and steadfast friends who have journeyed with her, we, we give you our thanks. For this pastor who is willing to lock herself in an unair conditioned tower each year to shine your light on the plight of the hungry in this community, who was the first minister to ride on a gay pride float here in Miami, who encourages us to engage with other faith communities, whose office door is always open and who welcomes us all into her own home to break bread. Thank you. Thank you, Holy One, for calling her, for renewing her time and time again, for guiding her and challenging her and for being the steadfast presence in her life. Even as we celebrate all of Pastor Lori's gifts and talents she so freely gives, we would humbly ask that today you allow her to receive our love, to hear our words of gratitude, to take them deeply within herself as we rejoice that she is our pastor and support her as we journey together into our joint future of service to you. We pray this as we look forward to a long future of her spirit-filled leadership here at Gables UCC. And once again, give you our thanks. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
In the film Saving Private Ryan, Captain Miller is played by Tom Hanks and Private Ryan by Matt Damon, and they're having a conversation toward the end of the film before a great and terrible battle takes place. And they're reminiscing about home. And Captain Miller says, I think about the hammock in my backyard, and my wife wearing a pair of my old work gloves, trimming the rose bushes. And then Private Ryan tells a long story about the last time that he and his three brothers were together, three brothers who are now deceased in the war, and Captain Miller has come to rescue the last brother. And he tells the story about the last time that they were together. And then he says to Captain Miller, what about those rose bushes? And Captain Miller says, no, no, that one I keep for myself. 
Well, I should stop there then and say nothing more. <laughs> but I do want to lift up another group that's been alluded to, not on my behalf or Siana's, but it's all those people out there that are part of the family and the support system for pastors. And those people's sacrifices and their love and their participation in the life of the church and what that means. You know, sometimes people ask me, what is the secret to Lori's success as a pastor? And I have a very easy answer to that. She works her butt off. <laughs> Every once in a while, Sienna and I are sitting at home and we're looking around and we're saying, well, where's Lori? And we walk outside and we look down the street and we see her car parked outside and we say, well, at least we know where she is. I think that her dedication and her urging is all about wanting to do things that she would ask other people to do. Each year when we think about our commitment to the church in terms of what we're going to give, she urges me to do a little bit better and a little bit more, and her explanation is, I don't want to ask people to do something that I wouldn't do myself. So just like we need a pastor, the pastor needs you. And to be asked by Lori, and she asks a lot of you to do things for the church, to me, that's an honor, and that's a privilege, and that's a calling that we all need to answer. So today, as we think about our offering and our gifts, I hope you will think about the example that she sets and that we all set for each other in this beloved community as we think about our gifts. And as for the rest, no, no, I keep that just for myself. <laughs> Will the ushers please bring forth the offerings?
<laughs> Good morning. My name is Dr. Gisela Vega, and I am proud to serve as your vice moderator. On behalf of our church and our executive council, we are so happy to be able to honor Lori today and all that she has done. So yes, it's time for us to give you a little, uh, a little special recognition. So our first gift that I'd like to present to her is um, on behalf of Coral Gables United Church of Christ, we congratulate and celebrate Pastor Lori Hafner on her 40th anniversary of her ordination on August 18, 2019. A beloved leader who proclaims the gospel and extends an extravagant welcome to all. We present you with this. Good morning, my name is John Graham, but today I'm the mayor of Coral Gables. Well, so from the office of the mayor of the city of Coral Gables, I have a proclamation, and it is quite lengthy as you can imagine anything that would have Lori's accomplishments on it, so I will summarize how it celebrates Lori. It's also in two-point font. Pastor, the Reverend Lorinda Hafner has served the historic Coral Gables Congregational United Church of Christ for the last 13 years as senior pastor with strong leadership and bold witness. So we celebrate her commitment to upholding George Merrick's vision of the church being a center point of the community, her concern for food insecurity and raising over 70 tons of food for feeding South Florida, her proactive social engagement shepherded the church in becoming a publicly announced sanctuary church, her recognition that the church historically is a welcoming place for the performing arts and her support of the CAP program and conservatory, initiating the WISE ministry, her out-of-the-box thinking, and creating worship experiences in Spanish, German, and online, and also her overwhelming support for the church's statement, wherever you are and whoever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and supporting our open and affirming church. Now, therefore, Raldez, <laughs> Raul Valdez Fowley is mayor of Coral Gables, along with the members of our city commission, do hereby proudly proclaim August 18th, 2019, Reverend Lorinda Hafner Day in Coral Gables. Well, get ready, everybody, because it's not just the Coral, D Coral Gables that wants to celebrate uh, Pastor Lori today. I'm Commissioner Eileen Higgins and longtime member of this church. I remember when I moved to Miami, I started to talk to people and I explained, you know, my strengths, my weaknesses, things I questioned, things I knew very solidly because... I was looking for a church, and I wanted a place where I could feel at home. And so um, every single person I talked to told me that I would fit in perfectly at Coral Gables Congregational. And so um, I showed up here unannounced on a Sunday, but it was also a Sunday where they have the sort of 1 o'clock, you know, they give you a jam sandwich and some chips um, and explain what the church is all about, usually some cookies too. Um, but... So that was fine. I thought, okay, okay. And then they um, set up a personal appointment with Pastor Lori for me later that week. So I went in, um, met with Pastor Lori, and um, one hour later, I was um, on the board of the Justice um, <laughs> Board and Witness Board, and I essentially walked away with this to-do list of like social justice issues and equality and poverty alleviation. And, and uh, anybody else gotten a Pastor Lori to-do list? Yeah. So um, we've been talking a lot about being called today, and some might say she was called to serve God. I'm, that may be true, but I actually think she was called to call us to do God's work. And 
Because of you, Pastor Lori, Miami-Dade County is a better place because you have enlisted all of us to do the service of the people and make this place a better um, community to live in. So I'm proud to be one of your congregants, if that's a word. Thank you. Let me introduce Commissioner Levine Cava. I'm Daniela Levine Cava. I also consider myself a longtime member of this church. And while I'm officially of the Jewish faith, I feel very much at home in this church and have for several decades. I've known many pastors at this church, and I was so delighted to be part of welcoming this wonderful pastor to this church who carries on this tradition in her unique and wonderful way. Um, this church is, of course, a sanctuary church. And we may not be a sanctuary county, not uh, because of anything that I would wish, uh, and I might be removed from office for saying so. <laughs> so. So we're so proud of the social justice tradition of this church. We're so proud of the cultural legacy of this church. We're so proud of the open, affirming welcome of this church. And so I am delighted to join with my wonderful colleague, Commissioner Eileen Higgins, also parishioner <laughs> Eileen Higgins, to offer this special proclamation on behalf of Mayor of Miami-Dade County, Carlos Jimenez, our chairwoman, Audrey Edmondson, and all of the Board of County Commissioners who might not uh, know the grace of this church, but boy, are they missing out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know we all want chocolate. I just need to say just a couple quick things. First of all, Eunice O'Rourke, I know you are here. It is her 92nd birthday, so we want to say happy birthday to Eunice. Also, I want to thank Ben Guest so much. He is uber busy that he came. And as I said, I never ask him to preach because the next week people go, where's Ben? But I did on this special occasion. Ben, thank you so much. I also want to thank Megan. Pastor Megan kind of pushed me into this. I didn't even realize it was my 40th year. And she said, we've got to do something. I was like, no, no, no. And she insisted. And I'm so glad she did. Thank you, Pastor Megan, so much. And it is my honor every single day to work with her and Pastor Aaron and our entire staff. They cannot be beat. Really quickly, I want to say, so you all can meet them, my mother, 90-year-old Colleen Hafner, is here. You met my wonderful husband. You've met him over all these years, Rick Walters. Sianna, come here. Come here. This is my daughter. Sometimes you don't see her, but this is my daughter, Sianna Marie. <laughs> my brother, Lauren, and his family are in Minnesota. And my brother, my, you all know Lars. You've, you've not, not met Lars. Lars and his family, Tara and Sam and J.E. and Mia, and my beloved Lily. So thank you all so much. And, and I happen to have a sister and several brothers from a different mother, but they're, they mean everything to me. Hazel has been a lifelong friend of mine. She's been at all the important occasions of my life. Just ask her. That was in the paper one time that she said. <laughs> this is her husband, Alan, who I adore. And of course, you all know Ron and Steve. Ron has been with me all 40 years. Don't ask him to tell you stories, because he will, and I don't want you to know him. And and of course, his husband, Steve, who has also been a part of my life. And for that, I am so grateful. Someone once asked me, what does this all mean to you? And I will tell you, the greatest privilege, the greatest honor of being a pastor is being invited into your lives, is to be welcomed in at those times when they are the most difficult and the times when they are the most joyous. So thank you for the privilege and the honor of being a part of your life and the greater life of this congregation. It has been an absolute pleasure to be with you. You are fun, you are joyous, you are faithful, and I could not be any other place than right here among you. So thank you for that honor and that privilege. And let's... <laughs> I'm going to send you off with my favorite benediction. It's my benediction that I give every Easter. And what I say to you all is this, because the tomb is empty, our lives can be full. So go forth and dance as if no one is, as no one is watching. Sing as if no one is listening. Love as if you've never been hurt. And live, live as if heaven is on earth. Go now in such joy and peace. Amen. Amen.